Hi everybody, it's Dystopian Wars Week here at On Tabletop, and we have two amazing prizes up for grabs. Our first prize is the Sturgenium Skies two-player starter set. For your chance to win, get your comments in on YouTube. Our second prize is the Hunt for the Prometheus two-player starter set. The winner for this prize will be chosen from comments on OnTabletop.com. Hello everybody and welcome back to another Dystopian Wars Faction Chat. I'm joined by Chris from War Cradle Studios and today he's going to be telling me all about the Union. I am indeed. So, the Union. They've been busy, it has to be said, uh, manifesting their destiny. They have indeed. All over the country and all points south as well. Well, the Union are a real mainstay faction for us because mm -hmm. of course they're in... Wild West Exodus as well. So there's a lot of people who are Union players in both and uh, are very much Union all the way. Mm -hmm. And they're a faction of essentially one nation, mm -hmm. really. And while you might think that that means that they have uh, a, a lack of variety, it's certainly not the case. Okay. There's still a, a lot of variety with the Union mm -hmm. and we um we're going to see some more of that coming through oh, fascinating uh, one of the things uh that people might be interested in seeing when looking at the map is mm. you know how much the union has expanded from what we know of the united states yes. today the union has really pushed into central and south america and now controls uh, a significant amount of that land mass yeah and they want some more. Well, it's always a good way to uh, gain new resources and expand your sphere of influence within the world, especially for such a young nation. Uh, I do notice there's quite a lot of cogs <laughs> in the middle of their land there. So, uh, yes. yeah, uh, very much a threat from within uh, feel there for the, the poor old Union. The, the fleets themselves, then, um, are these a sort of an extrapolation of the Union ironclads? Uh, that they would have faced, or is it more sort of we've got the the union, but obviously then there was the was there a confederacy? Did, there was, yes. Did, so yes. they they suffered that, had to go through it, and then push into Mexico as well, which means the Spanish slash Latin alliance influence is possibly in there as well. Yeah. So the at the end of the Or War, which is um, what the the American Civil War <laughs> of our world is called in the dystopian age. Yeah. Um, because it was very much more a war of resources hmm. than it was about anything else. The Union came out victorious and were on a very much a, a war footing. Nikolai Tesla had thrown his lot in with them, mm -hmm. and therefore we'd see you'd see a lot of um, kind of arc technology, which is his particular forte, mm. uh, coming into the forces of the Union. And we were about to see that with the release of the Mexico, which is a new battle fleet for the Union. And the Mexico is a variant on the Constitution hull, mm -hmm. but it has this arc generator in the front and, and two of these arc weapons. So, right. Um, so, so it's very much a blending of, um, I suppose, a, a more traditional, I use the, the phrase quite wrongly, with a, a, a sort of a steampunk-esque game, but a traditional fleet married to the enlightened because they have within their ranks people who are more sort of au fait or pushing the new technology to a very small extent yes but it's very limited right. to really what what tesla's involvement okay. is because uh he kind of went against the grain and threw everything in with the union right um because he believed that there was then a, a, a slight imbalance in, mm. in the forces because of this new technology that had come in from the Union, the, the Confederate rebellion as it was or is now, was just kind of wiped out quite, quite quickly and, mm. and General Grant saw that it was almost crushed into the ground right. um, beneath his, his armoured heel. And then because they were still on a war footing, they've kind of pushed into Central and South America and they, they've kept that impetus yeah. up so now you have this union war machine that's still pumping out ships and robots and all kinds of weird yeah. and wonderful stuff well um, once, once you're on a war footing it's just very easy to maintain that for your economy uh, certainly yeah. is um so 
With that in mind, then, the Union order of battle, mm -hmm. uh, what sort of things are we going to be looking at with them? One of the things, as you can see from the artwork, is this um, this paddle steamer mm -hmm. feel that, that is very, very prolific within the Union ships. So the the fact that they are um, they've got this the paddle wheel technology means that they can do that ninety degree turn yeah. um, on the spot. It means they can use um, tactical cavitation, which limits submerged weaponry against them. It messes up you know, whatever they use to locate their targets from an underwater location, uh, and they can also stop their drift by. Mm. Oh, by cat yeah, yeah. yeah. So they've got some options um, as insofar as movement, which is which is an interesting mm -hmm. thing for the Union. But uh, also within the order of battle that you can find online, it's your your place to go for all the special rules, all of the unit cards, the point costs, mm -hmm. and the rules about how you build a fleet. So. Uh, as you can see, the Union Battle Fleet, which is the faction battle fleet, is very open. You can pretty much take whatever you like in it, but you don't get a bonus for that. Mm. Uh, but then when you look at the theme fleets or the, um, the, the fleets that are based around a specific flagship, such as the Constitution, the Enterprise and the Mexico, uh, it means that you have a bit more flavour. You mm. are limited in the ships that you can take. As example here, the Enterprise... Um, you have to have the Enterprise, you have to have a Montgomery class unit, but then you can take any other number of Union units um, mm -hmm. within that. But you get a command override, which means you can deny somebody a particularly interesting thing that they're trying yep. to achieve. And uh, you have some flexibility on things like the Acrons you can take and some of the Defiant or Roanoke classes, so you can you can spam those. Whereas normally you can only take one of each type of okay. unit. Yeah, so there's a certain amount of give and take then within yeah. the, the specialised fleets, shall we say? And it means you get more of a theme to yeah. those those um, battle fleets. Hmm. Uh, so, what sort of weaponry then do the Union favour? Are they all about the the big brutal guns? Yeah, so Fourth of July fireworks. Yeah, absolutely. They've got this um, kind of six shooter thing going on. Okay, so it's yeah. a theme with their with their weapons, their heavy gun batteries. Um, they look like a revolver, um, mm -hmm. and it means that they've got quite a rapid fire. So they can do something called a special rule called "Give them hell." Right. Yes. Uh, which essentially means that all of their heavy gun batteries or anything with a gunnery or the fuselage trait can. Um, can just unleash this m this mighty barrage mm -hmm. against uh, their opponents, which gives them the devastating quality, oh, which I think we mentioned before yeah, yeah. means that your uh, exploding hits do three hits instead of two. Yeah, just uh, really lay into the, the sheer volume of firepower coming in there. With That's enough it. bullets, you'll hit something. So timing yeah. that right means that you can really start to plough in some damage. Yeah. You don't want to do it all the time because it, it gives those ships disorder because they are concentrating so much on the firepower oh, fire, right. that uh, you know they're getting uh, recoil damage and mm. you know, the crew are doing nothing but focusing on the gunnery and reloading. So uh, it can be slightly detrimental, but it's worth doing it at the right point if mm. you can time it right. But they have these electro cannons as well, which have got the arc quality, which are good at doing um, a kind of critical hits and disorder yeah. and that type of thing. So, um, yeah, you'll see some very um, interesting bits, like the, the cruise missile silo as well, which I've got a lot of dice at long range. They're, they do blast, they're aerial. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, yeah, they, there's, some, there's some good bits in there. So, well, they are fond of their, uh, their weaponry, it has to be said. So... It only sensible that the Union follows suit in that regards. Uh, what sort of ships then are, are we looking at? You said the, the paddle steamers are obviously very nimble, um, but are there any particular ships within the fleet that really sort of sing Union to you? Oh, well, a Constitution is yeah. is the, the poster boy of the Union, as we can see there. Um, lots of forward-facing heavy gun batteries, which means that they give them hell. You can absolutely start yeah. piling in that. That um, that damage and 
it's a really good place to to jump off for yeah. for union players. The alternative is the enterprise, and the enterprise there is a big box set, mm-hmm. which means you get a lot of plastic in there. It's great value for money. It's a whole force really in a box, and the enterprise has a high capacity. Uh, it's a high capacity carrier, so right. has a lot of SRS tokens. The support squadrons can also build the small carriers, which at the moment are quite big in the meta. Oh, right. Okay. And uh, But they have launch catapults, so they've got an extended range on their SRS launch as well. Right. So it means that they can really stand back and do some damage. And because the Enterprise is equipped with rocket batteries, it means that they can fire at long range. Yeah and still be fairly effective. So that's uh, a common thing for the support ships. They've all got rocket batteries and um, the ability to launch SRS. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's really, if you wanted to start and get into the Union, they're really good jump off points. Interesting stuff. Is is the the typical Union fleet then kind of mixed um, between the the heavy gun batteries? Because I'm looking at the... Uh, the constitution there especially and even though they they're very nimble and they have that pivot on the spot failure the back pedal the fact that they've got so many guns front loaded on them yep leads me to believe they're, they're kind of bull rushing a lot of the time yeah absolutely and uh you know they can steam in if you pardon the expression yeah, yeah. and uh and that, but then they can turn and go in a completely different direction mm. and and um Get get that flank attack in, which is good fun. From a composition perspective, mm-hmm. the Akron, which we can see there in the background, which are the, um, the kind of the aerial support yeah. units, are really good as attached units <laughs> and provide a lot of support, um, kind of anti uh, anti submarine weaponry, mm. anti air weaponry, and make uh, the units a lot more survivable. Is there any other ships you want yeah. to tell me about? Because I see one lurking there that you've marked off. Yeah, so we're, the John Henry Vitruvian Colossus ah. is a recent addition to the Orbat. Um, this is something that I'm really excited about mm-hmm. and I, I want to uh, talk about because they are a Vitruvian Colossus, but they're not as big as the Morena for the Commonwealth or the Hockmeister for the Imperium. Uh, they stand um, probably waist okay. to, to kind of waist height to them, but it means that they we're not seeing them just waist up. Yeah, they fly, so they oh, um, right. they are a skimming unit um, with their rocket packs. And tell, tell me, they've got a massive hammer. They do. Um, God bless you. You can either have uh, a single massive hammer or individual um, hammers. Right. Which, you know give slightly different variants on the same thing. They've got Gatling guns or they can have rockets. Uh, they, um, yeah, they, they've got shield generators as standard. So they're, they're really versatile units and mm-hmm. I'm really looking forward to seeing those on the table and seeing how they play. It sounds like um, Tesla's been messing around making an upgraded version of his, of his suits. Yeah, but, you know, he's a workaholic, so he's, oh, well, he's constantly getting involved in new projects. Mm. Like I say, because he's thrown everything in with the union now, um, the union technology is very much hand in glove with his own experimentation and his own, his own developments. And um, but his his version of technology, even though he he was once a, a big player in the enlightened, mm. uh, you don't tend to see much of that in the enlightened lists. Whereas their yeah. technology has gone in a different way. He's, he's taken a different direction. The path less trodden i suppose or flown over in this case um yeah fascinating stuff if you've any questions about the union uh, or dystopian wars in general please feel free to drop them below and we'll pass them across to chris for an answer but until next time bye bye hi everybody it's dystopian wars week here at on tabletop and we have two amazing prizes up for grabs our first prize is the sturgeonium skies two-player starter set for your chance to win get your comments in on youtube Our second prize is the Hunt for the Prometheus two-player starter set. The winner for this prize will be chosen from comments on ontabletop.com. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.